Back now with part two of our special report on the Colonial Parkway murders. For the families of the people whose lives were lost some 30 years ago, the frustration is just as strong now as it was then. And tonight we are looking at missteps made during the opening stages of the investigation that may still be hindering things now. Then your side's Andy Fox continues the story tonight. Andy? Tom and Anita, this is the most exhaustive, complete book ever written about what are known as the Colonial Parkway serial killings. You will hear from the author, and during his investigation, became very critical of the National Park Service. The park rangers handled these crime scenes terribly. Colonial Parkway serial killings author Blaine Pardo writes how he thinks the National Park Service botched the Keith Call Cassandra Haley disappearance 30 years ago today. And this is something that really points to some of the ineptitude on the part of the National Park Service. In his book, Special Kind of Evil, Pardo explains how the park rangers discover Keith's car thinking it was abandoned. They had entered the car, taken out all the clothing, Took it to the park ranger station, tried to figure out who owned it. The rangers discover Cassandra Haley's checkbook, called her house, found out she's missing, then realized their mistake. These pictures show how the rangers put the belongings back in the car. Pardo writes that recontaminated the crime scene. Keith's brother Chris thought that back in May 2001. I still think to this day that they should have just left things alone and let people who have a little more experience with it handle it. Um, Fudged up the crime scene. So did Cassandra's mother, Joanne. When the park ranger went into the car, he destroyed things. He he got his fingerprints all over it. Don't you wish he had seen the car there? Oh, of course. In 1988, Irv Wells was special agent in charge of the FBI's Norfolk Field Office. He would retire in 1990, case unsolved. I do think about this case a lot. It's the biggest regret of my career. The Colonial Parkway is federal property, but the park rangers did not contact the FBI until the next day and had already moved Keith's car to a garage. They just made a strategic error. They, notwithstanding the other two cases, they found the car and assumed it was an abandoned car. The National Park Service refused any interview. We would have asked why the Rangers were not more alarmed finding Keith's car just one mile from where they found Kathy Thomas's car a year and a half earlier. She and Rebecca Andowski were dumped in Kathy's car with their throats slit. And Wells was concerned how the Park Service acted during the Call Haley case. They were uh, initially secreted on that particular investigation. We just didn't get any cooperation. For the 30th anniversary of Cassandra's disappearance, the Haley's would only send us this letter of frustration. Lack of answers in the case is magnified by our feelings of abandonment by law enforcement. We emailed the Haley letter to the FBI field office in Chesapeake, their response. We are fully engaged in the investigation and actively coordinating with the state police to bring closure to all the Colonial Parkway cases. We gave it the proverbial full court press, and through the years we've extended and expended countless resources, and it's very frustrating to think that uh, the case is not solved. Frustrating, but the bigger question, how can the FBI and other law enforcement not solve at least one of these unsolved murders? If you just take one piece of information to solve this case, if you solve one, you would solve them all. Today, 30 years later, the FBI still has an agent assigned to the case that keeps in contact with Keith's family. I asked her the other day, do you think that we're gonna have an answer before either the perpetrator dies or we die? She said, I hope so. We're getting older now. My parents have already died. We yeah. need answers. Wells thinks it is possible the killing stopped in 1989 because the killers either died, killed each other, or are in prison. It should be noted in 2010, the FBI did meet with the Call Haley and Thomas Dowski families. That was eight years ago, eight more years of not knowing. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side.